Hello and welcome to another episode of Peppy Basics. Today, we'll be diving into component lifestyle hooks, or just hooks for the rest of this video. So what exactly are hooks? Well, hooks in Bevy are systems that run immediately when specific conditions are met for a component. As of Bevy 0.15, there are currently four points that at which you can attach hooks into the life cycle of a component. This is on its creation, on its insertion, on its replacement, or on its removal. Some of these hooks are actually forced to always run in a particular order, such as it's impossible to run the remove hook without also having the replace hook having run first, simply because of how Bevy implements the hooks and when they should run. There's a few things important to note about hooks. Each component is restricted to having only one hook per condition, ensuring clarity and avoiding conflicts of behavior. This is to prevent people from adding their own hooks to components that have already had hooks added by someone else that created the component in the first place. Hooks have plenty of flexibility, especially considering they can be registered on components that aren't originally from your crate, allowing you to add behavior where you can keep track of a component that may not have been added by you if the original creator of the crate doesn't actually use the hook that you're tying into. Allowing for seamless integration and customization with things such as Bevy Rapier and other crates that provide lots of components that you may want to react to being added or removed. However, you cannot override existing hooks. Once they have been established, they are there forever. This enforces consistency in your application as it prevents you from overriding behavior that may be critical to the operation of a third-party crate. So what are hooks used for? Hooks are not designed for general purpose code. Instead, they're specifically intended for things like bookkeeping or other tasks that maintain and manage the state of your application. For instance, you can use hooks to update indexes or maps so that associate particular components with specific entities in a quick reference lookup, which can be essential for keeping track of entities without the need to iterate through every component to find the specific value you're looking for, such as all entities with a specific health being in a vector stored somewhere, or, or a hash map containing the coordinates of a specific entity so that you can look up the coordinates and find the associated entity rather than needing to iterate through all entities to find one with a specific coordinate you're looking for. Hooks can also be useful for cleaning up relationship entities, things that mark a target such as removing the association between the targeted entity when it is despawned or removing the targeting entity when it is despawned. For detecting changes, it is better to use queries with the added or change filter to access entities that have changed. You should only use hooks if there is a need for immediate updates as queries can introduce a frame delay between the value changing and the system detecting it. So things like hierarchies where you don't want a any state where your hierarchy is invalid should use hooks. Whereas if you're simply looking for a change and you're going to respond to it, use queries. Similarly, for removal detection, the removed components utility provides a simple and effective way of handling situations where you don't actually need to know what value was removed, simply that the component has been removed. Hooks, on the other hand, allow you to actually read the value that has been removed, or in this case will be removed, so you can update your bookkeeping with knowing what value was there to begin with. Let's break down the four hook conditions and how to use them. On add, the on add hook is triggered whenever a component is added to an entity. This includes situations like spawning a new entity, as this process inherently involves adding all of the components to the entity. This hook is particularly useful when you need to initiate a specific state or update your bookkeeping that a particular entity has now gained a specific component. For example, you might use this hook to configure initial values, register your entity into a map, or create a relationship between the entity that's being spawned and some other part of the world. The on insert hook is triggered whenever a component is inserted onto an entity. This action involves spawning a new entity as all its components are considered to be inserted during this process. If the component is new, the on insert hook will run after the on add hook, ensuring that the initialization tasks are completed in sequence. However, it's important to note that this hook does not activate when the value is modified via a query, making it inadequate for proper change detection. A common use for this hook is to build things like hierarchies and make sure that they stay up to date and relative. So every time you insert a specific component, it can go in and modify other things such as the parent or the children of that specific entity. On replace, the on replace hook is executed when a component is either replaced or removed from an entity. It activates just before the component's value is overwritten, providing access to the old value for any necessary processing. This hook also runs prior to the on insert hook, ensuring that tasks like removing outdated components and updating dependencies between 
entities occurs in the correct sequence. For example, you might use this hook to clean up references to the old component value, such as in a map that stores relationships between entities and their position in the map. Then when the on insert runs, it can add the new value into the map. This ensures the changes are propagated smoothly throughout your system without needing to do lots of redundant double storing, such as storing a map that relates the entity back to that data. Finally, we have on remove. On remove is a hook that is executed whenever a component is removed from entity. This includes scenarios where an entity itself is despawned, as removing all its components is part of this process. This hook runs after the on replace hook. This ensures that any changes related to the component being replaced are also handled first. The primary purpose of this hook is to clean up residual data and relationships associated with the component being removed. For example, you can use it to remove references from resources or update tracking indexes to reflect the uh, absence of this component. This ensures that systems remain consistent and avoids stale data references, such as when you have a component that is tracking an entity that now no longer contains the component it was supposed to be tracking. So how exactly do we add hooks? As of 0.15, there are three ways to add hooks. The first and preferred approach is to define the hooks when implementing the component trait. This is most straightforward approach as it integrates the hooks with the component definition itself, making it much easier to find and edit later. For these examples, I'm taking from a game that I am myself making. So in this example, I'm defining a hexagon ID, which is the location inside the hexagon map, which this cell belongs to. I register an on insert hook that gets the hex ID that I've just inserted and registers it into my map so that I can associate a specific ID to an entity. This makes looking up specific entities later much, much faster, since I can just look up in the hash map the specific hex ID that I need and get the entity to then query it for its components, rather than needing to iterate through all of the entities in the world to find the one with a specific component I need. I then register an on replace hook that does exactly the same thing but in reverse, removing the ID from the map so that the association is lost. I don't need to re-register the new replace value since the on insert will then run after on replace, resulting in the new value being inserted into the map. The next approach is you can register hooks on components that already exist. So for example, registering components on a, from a crate that you do not own. This can be done with world access. This involves calling register component hooks on the world and providing a generic value of the component type that you're requesting. This can also be done with component ID if you don't know the component type directly for dynamic uh, registration. There is one additional restriction to this before you can call the on insert and on replace is that the component cannot be used by any entity in the world, or as the bevy team puts it, any archetype cannot use this component. This is to prevent you from having an invalid state where a component may have been added to the world and spawned onto entities without its on add and on insert methods being called, but then can be removed from the world. This would be considered invalid state. And so you are not able to register hooks if at any point the component may have already had some of the hooks fire. The third and final approach is sort of an extension of the on world. And that is to use the app. You can call it app.worldmute to get mutable access to the world from the app initialization state. You can then pass this to whatever function you want that uses a mutable world. For in this example, I'm just passing it to the same function I used previously. I've put forward a feature request on Bevy to add a direct dedicated method to the app struct that allows you to register hooks directly while initializing the world. Since this is a safer way of doing it than the world initialization, since it, most of the time when you have app access, there will not be any components spawned. This is not necessarily always the case since it is entirely possible that the app has been run finished, returned, and then it's going to be run again. So entities may actually, in fact, have been spawned into the world. But in most cases, when you have app access, you will not have entities spawned yet. So this is the preferred approach to registering third-party hooks rather than registering them directly with world access inside, say, an exclusive system. And that concludes our video on component lifestyle hooks in Bevy. Hooks are an invaluable tool for maintaining relationships between entities and other forms of bookkeeping that may be stored in resources. When used thoughtfully, they can help maintain organization and ensure the systems in your game function cohesively. Just remember that they're designed for bookkeeping tasks, so avoid using them for general purpose logic as they are considerably slower and don't always detect everything that you would expect them to detect. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more Bevy Basics. And I'd like to give a thank you to all my Kofi supporters for your dedication. It really helps the channel grow. I do also have YouTube memberships available if anyone wants to subscribe to those and get cool emojis for when I'm streaming. 
And finally, I do have a Discord. If anyone wants to come in and ask questions, I'm always happy to help. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. And until then, happy coding.